Hey y'all, today let's show you how to break down, service, and reassemble a Shimano TX2000. Uh, I'm going to pop this spool off by undoing that drag knot there. I'm also going to undo this handle by undoing this, or unscrewing this knob on this side. It's going backwards or counterclockwise. This uh, handle cap should have a washer underneath there and this little squared off uh, plastic piece that fits inside the channel for the for the main gear. Just pull that out. We're going to work on the uh, the rotor first with the bale assembly. So we're going to take off this click ratchet with those washers on top just by pulling up. And we're going to do that, that screw right here. And then counterclockwise to remove this nut. Then you can kind of pull that up by rocking it. All right, so the easiest thing to take off here, even though it seems the most odd or difficult, is just this little quick figure, quick fire uh, trigger here. Just unscrew it, and that's all that happens. It just comes off. Nothing else. <coughs> now I'm going to undo the screws for this bail arm and for this side as well. leave it there for now. This just kind of pulls up and same thing for this one. Uh, just kind of go slow with this one because there's a spring under there. Notice that the screws on each side are different so I'm going to place them kind of like that. I'm just going to pull up and you're good. Don't worry about that part actually where that came off or where how that goes back on. I'm going to put it back together. Now we can undo this cover by undoing that screw there. comes up like this and you have this plastic housing and that little tab then that tab then is going to go over something I'm going to show you in a sec uh, there's also a, a post on the bottom that fits inside that hole to secure it so we can just separate that so you can see what it looks like now we can undo this notice there's one large screw in the middle that goes through the uh, the trip arm or the trip lever and two smaller supporting screws on either side there's also a weight in here so this is used kind of like a, a counterweight or something just pull that straight up there's the weights and this is kind of how the trip arm sits just like that I think that's it yeah that's it Alright, so let me clean this part up. We'll put this back together first and then I'll show you how to break down the line roller. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add some grease around these weights. Uh, add some grease around here in that hole. Some around that post where that trip arm is going to be. Or the lever. You can certainly add some to the back side here. There's not a, a lot of places that need grease on this. So we're not going to do a whole lot to it. I wouldn't grease this. I just grease the end of it when we put it together. And that's the first thing we're going to put back in. So we're going to stick that in flat, looking just like this. That's exactly how it look. Then we're going to cover it up and screw that back in. Notice I kept all these screws separate just so I know which ones go where. But there were a lot of different size screws on this. Now to put this thing back in, we're going to line that uh, trip arm. We're going to put that kind of in the middle somewhere where it's kind of sticking out because we want to line that up where that gap in this piece right here fits over that end of the lever that's right there you can see inside there right there so I'm just gonna drop that in kind of making sure I watch it as I put it in to make sure it's gonna go over that it's difficult not to but we want to make sure it is so stick it in just like that and we're going to feel for it and we're going to test it out right now by just moving this back and forth and see if that moves and I felt it move so that's good. So if you look at that, you see that, that piece is moving there so we know it's set over it which means it's set properly. Now I'm just going to stick this spring or this arm back into the spring. 
uh, we can add some grease to this spring. It is ne really not that necessary, but it is older, so it does give it some protection. If you have to change it out, obviously, that's what you would do. Now I'm going to kind of hold my thumb over this piece while I stick the spring inside, just so it doesn't move on me. And that should be about good. Right there is fine. Now notice it wants to raise up on you. If you stuck it inside all the way down the bottom, it shouldn't raise up, but it might. So you just want to be a little careful with that part. And just go ahead and cover it up before you uh, lose the position on it. Now that's secure, it's really not going to go anywhere. All right, let's go ahead and do the line roller by removing this screw out here. Can pull this straight up. You have a washer. And you should have a collar or a bushing and a line roller. And that's exactly what we have. Let's get that out so you can see what it looks like. All right, it's just like that. I want to be a little careful with it because there's two tabs on the end. I'll show you what that's for. Uh, you'll notice that the fatter end or thicker end of this line roller will be facing towards the bail wire. And the thinner end will be facing towards the bail arm. So if you look on this uh, bush and you'll see two little tabs on here. Those tabs just kind of secure it in between those two slots or just a couple slots on the uh, on this piece right here. It's not necessarily something you need to be concerned about or, or worry about too much. It just kind of lines itself up. But when I set it in there, I'm going to kind of position it to where it's locked in place, essentially. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it back together. We're going to add some oil, just kind of around there. I'm going to add some of that hole where that screw sits as well. That will kind of work its way in as we, um, as we use the reel. So not a whole lot needs to be done besides that. A little bit of oil around that bushing. Stick it in. Remember it's going from the thinner part to the thicker part of the line roller. Stick that on there and I'm going to try to line this up with the slots. See them right there? Yep, and I can feel it so we're good. You basically want to make sure that's flush with that post right there. Then we can take our washer, kind of lay that over it. And I'm going to stick this on top of it, just like that, and then screw it in. Now you don't want to snug that down yet until you put everything together. So we're just going to hold off on that for a, net, for a minute. I'm going to add some grease inside here. And that should be okay. Now you can definitely add a little bit of grease around this post right here that's on the bail arm. And a little bit inside that hole where that tab on the uh, on that arm that's in the spring goes. Uh, that will be pretty much it. Alright, so to get this back on we're going to stick, make sure that um, arm is recessed inside of the channel on this side right here. And then we're just going to find that hole, put it over it, and then just kind of rotate this until we find the spot for it, which is right there. Now I'm going to stick this piece on. The way that's going to sit is just inside that slot that it's designed for. Same shape. Drop it in there like that, and then we can secure it with the screw. Test it to make sure it works well. Feels fine. And I can add a little bit of grease around that post right there. I'm not going to since I added some inside the hole. Rest that over it and then screw that in also. The last piece left will be this, uh, the trigger. I'm gonna open the bail up like that. So add a little bit of grease around here. And I'm just gonna pop this on there. It'll look just like that and then secure it. I'm gonna close that up, make sure it works and it does. While we're here, we can go ahead and grease right here in that channel. Uh, you know what, before I do that guys, I'm going to show you something here for later on. 
so you guys can see it because I do want to add some grease to it. If you look in the bottom there, there are two channels, right? There's one over here and one here. One is wider than the other. Take note of that because later on we'll need to use it when we put the uh, when we put the rotor back on top of the housing. So let me add a light amount of grease there inside the hole where the pinion is going to go through, and some on top where that nut's going to sit. All right, so let's do the housing. Uh, let's do the top part first. I'll take that off and show you what I'm talking about with that uh, with the um, the two slots on there. If you look at that, you'll see there's one that's wider. This is, this is the wider one here. That's the shorter one. They'll have to correspond or match up onto the rotor when you put this back together. This piece has a spring underneath. You can pull it off. I'll leave it off just and then put it back on afterwards. Then you have this plastic piece right here that just comes up. I moved that um, I moved that dog out of the way to get to it. We can unscrew this. That's the dog for it. And there'll be a spring under there as well. And I'm gonna open the side up. I got three screws here that I want to remove to get the side cover off. Uh, if you notice on this, there's a couple of black screws and one silver screw. Uh, I think they're all the same size in terms of length, but I could be completely wrong on that one. But you want a black match with the black, and the silver goes over with the silver. No, they're the same length. Just the colors are are different. All right, so now I just take this cover, pull it straight up. You're gonna have a couple pieces on there. There, oh, we have a bearing. Awesome. I thought we we're gonna have a bushing inside there. Let me rotate this down so I can remove that uh, screw for the block. Then we can pull that shaft out, just like that. Now I can pull this main gear out. All right, there we go. I'm gonna clean that off a little bit so it can fit in there better. Uh, you can also replace that with a bearing, and I may end up doing that. We'll just have to measure and see if we have a bearing for it, which we should. You have the crosswind gear or the transfer gear and the block there. And now we can undo, undo these two screws at the top to get the pinion gear out. I'm not going to remove that lever that's there. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the, you know what? So I just won't do it. <laughs> Hopefully yours is not broken, you need to replace something on there. All right, so now you can just pull this off. You'll notice a couple things on here. There's a one or two washers. Looks like one, but I think there's two. Yep, two washers and a bearing. And that's it. We're just gonna clean this stuff up with a Q-tip and uh, toothbrush and we might use some corrosion x on it to kind of break down some of the old grease that's in there probably won't need to do that so see you guys after I clean the stuff up and come back to you i'm going to also check that bushing and see if i can um, swap it over the bearing or just leave it as is okay let's go into the pinion stack first uh let's go ahead and oil the bearing for it while i'm here i'm going to oil all three bearings as a matter of fact uh, and i did replace that bushing with with a bearing. Uh, if you were interested, the size was uh, 7 by 13 by 4 millimeters. And now I'm going to grease the pinion gear with a light amount of grease on it. And I'm going to grease the entire thing. I'm going to grease those threads where the nut's going to go over. Let's go ahead and grease inside this channel right here where that pinion bearing is going to sit. Uh, somewhere around that post where that dog sits. And I think that's pretty much all we're gonna do with this section. I did grease inside that hole where the pinion bottom, the bottom of the pinion bear, uh, bearing goes through. All right, so let's go ahead and get our bearing put back on there. Looking just like so. I'm gonna drop that in place. Make sure it goes down through that uh, hole inside there. Make sure this sits flush. And now we can stick our washers on there so we don't forget them. But we're gonna have to secure this with these two screws right here. One goes 
goes there, one goes here. All right, so now while I'm here, I'm gonna oil that inside this point right here. This is just for the arm. I'll kind of work that in. And that's it. I'm gonna leave that in the open position. So instead of being like this, it's gonna be like this. And we're gonna do this part first. Add a little bit of grease around this. Add some grease to this uh, ratchet right here. And what I wanted to show you guys was this piece is raised up on one end. That raised end right there will be facing up towards the spool or towards the rotor. This spring has a tab or a notch facing or perpendicular to this uh, to the spring itself. That'll be facing down towards the pinion gear or towards the uh, pinion bearing. Let me say that instead. Now the way you stick this on is we're just gonna wrap it around this and it'll look just like that. I'm gonna drop it inside here because there's a little channel inside that uh, piece right there that you wanna get this through. Now the way this is gonna be situated is it's going to fit in between this post and right here. So you have to make sure it's on the inside right here, not over here on this side. So we're gonna drop that in. This is key, so you wanna line this up with the pinion gear first before you start trying to push down on it, which is what I'm doing right now. And it came off on me, but not that bad. It'll stay in place, good. I think we're set. Yeah, we are. Okay, good. Now for the dog, we're gonna take our spring and put that on first. That's gonna go over this post right here. And I'm just gonna lay it on just like that. This has a ridge or a space right there. This will be facing down like this. I'm gonna stick this end over here somewhere. Then rotate that spring so it looks, hopefully you guys can see that, it's covering the uh, the ratchet, I'm sorry, the, uh, the dog on there. Now I'm just gonna take the spring and flick it over that post right there. And now it's set. Now we can screw that in. Of course you can screw it before you do that. Either one works. And that's it. All right, so if you were going to reuse your bushing, notice there's two tabs on the bottom of that bushing. If you look inside, I'll show you here, it might be a little easier. They're both the same on each, each side of it. If you look inside here, there's two little tabs, one tab there and one tab right there. Those two little notches will be, will be facing down into those tabs and it has to fit inside those tabs uh, to be correct. All right, add a little bit of grease here where that bearing is gonna sit. Some along here where that block kind of rides, around here where that cross wind gear will be, and along this side right here, just a little bit, nothing uh, crazy. We can also go ahead and grease inside here where that bearing is going to sit on this side. Now we can go ahead and grease our gears. Just put a light amount of grease on top of this uh, this cross wind gear here. And I know I call these uh, different names. Um, Shimano calls it the oscillation gear. Did add a little bit extra on top of the post right there. And now for the block, I'm gonna stick not a whole lot on this reel. It's kind of like that is good for the uh, for the inside right there. And then grease the rest of it. Same kind of deal for the uh, for the main gear or the drive gear. And we can add some grease inside that channel right there, so we don't have that. Uh, handle getting frozen inside there, which is a nightmare if it, if it happens to you. Now I'm gonna grease the bottom part of this um, main shaft. Notice there's a flat edge and a curved edge. That flat edge will be facing up in this direction when looking at the reel like this. And now I'm gonna stick in our bearing that we use to replace the bushing. Now we can stick on our oscillation gear. Have that point down somewhere. Stick the block on, it'll look just like this. 
make sure the the channel on that block is sitting over the post on that uh, <clears throat> on that oscillation gear. Now we can stick our main gear in, it's looking like so. I think it's the angle that makes it kind of difficult to get in there. And that's how it looks. Now we're going to take our shaft, stick that through with the flat edge facing up and then sticking that inside the block just like that. Now we can secure it with the screw. Now we're going to stick our washers that came off of this, our shims, that were on the main gear. Stick on our bearing. Now we can stick this cover on. And then just lock it up. Remember the silver screw goes over here and the two black ones go on this side. Snug is fine on these, you don't need to over tighten them. And I'm going to keep this with the dog in the engaged position uh, just to help aid when I put that rotor on top. Now again with the rotor there's two, there's one wider section or one wider side than the other. They're going to match up so I have the wide side over here, the thinner side over here. Take my wide side, face it towards the wide side on top of that piece and then we're set. You'll notice that it's, it's set properly because there's a significant raise of that pinion gear coming through the rotor. If it were wrong, let's say you were to do it on this side somehow, the clearance would not be as much. So you'd have a lesser amount of clearance and you would see like a little gap or space at the bottom right here. And it would not be proper. So you don't want to do that. Now we can secure with the screw or the, the nut. And you don't want to over tighten that because that can affect that piece on the bottom, could even crack it. So I just did a quite, uh, just a decent snug to where it's, as long as it lines up to one of those, uh, the flat side lines up to one of those uh, holes there so I can put the screw inside. Now we can stick our click gear on there. And our two washers. Your washers may vary. I'm just gonna get a feel for this and see how it feels. Feels good. Like it. Now for the handle, we're not gonna do a whole lot to it. We're just gonna clean some stuff off inside here and then add some grease. Add some grease right here just around that shaft or the back side of it. We're gonna kind of just grease the entire thing as a matter of fact. Push that down, we're gonna grease this for sure so we don't get that stuck inside the main gear at some point. Some inside the hole where that screw is going to go for the uh, the handle, the handle screw on the other side, and then for the uh, for the handle knob, we're just going to stick some oil right here, and some down around that screw that's on top there. And just kind of work it in. I like to start from this end because it has more of a gap. Keep it on an angle. Just kind of rotate that in your hand like that, and that should work. Now I'm going to stick that through. It's squared off, so you have to match it up to the uh, square in the shaft on the main gear. Line this up, that square as well inside there, and then just kind of screw it in. You want to be pretty snug on this. You don't want a lot of play. You don't want any play really. All right, last thing to do is the spool and the drag washers or drag washer. I think there's only one in here. To get that out, you're going to just reach in one of the open end of the tab or the spring that's in there, push in and up, and just kind of work your way around doing it like that to get it out. Let's see if this washer is good. Looks like it might be all right, but I think I want to change that out. Uh, the bottom, we can see there's a lot of dirt in here, so this reel has been just kind of sitting around. We're just going to clean out the old grease and put some oil and some grease in certain spots. And I'm gonna see if I have a drag washer for this. Uh, I wanna use a, like a carbon fiber or something in there. So give me a sec, I'll be right back. All right, I didn't have one that would fit. So I just replaced it with a pre-greased drag washer that was kind of cut to size. Drop the uh, cover over it. Now we're gonna take one end of this spring, angle it down so we get inside that channel. And then we're just gonna kind of rotate till we get it to fit inside the groove that is supposed to be inside there. Well, you'll know when you get it in there because you'll feel it pop. But you want to also double check to make sure that it's in that channel. 
and not sitting above or below it. That looks good. So for the back side, all I'm doing is going to oil right here under that tab for that uh, click tongue. Work that in a little bit. Add some grease to right here in the line keeper. And some on top of that spring or that click tongue and this area right here. This kind of helps protect it a little bit so it doesn't uh, get some salt water intrusion that starts to rust or something. Drop that on. I'm going to add some grease to the threads at the top. Stick on our drag washer. And even though we did kind of a test earlier, I'm going to do another test just to make sure. First I'm going to test the drag out since I changed that out. feels good. Yeah, that feels good. Test out the crank. That feels good. Down to reverse works. Trigger works. Disengage for the anti reverse. That works as well. Alright, so that's it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel and be sure to spread the word about it as well. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Now I can pull this main gear out. If I'm lucky, and there's no luck happening, it's stuck in that bushing. Somehow, somehow it's stuck in that bushing there. I'm gonna wiggle it out.